Hey guys, I am here at Adepticon 2016, and we have in front of us the game of Guild Ball, which should get you excited, but even more important, we have the one and only DC, one of our favorite people in the history of tabletop gaming, was there at the very early days when we started, and uh, one of our favorites. So DC, it's great to see you. Uh, it's great to see you guys and, again, and we, always we, fun. We have to know, so you started Clockwork Phoenix, yep. kind of your, your own thing. How are things going for you? Uh, things are going really well. I say that these days I'm a mercenary game developer. <laughs> uh, I developed a card game for Ninja Division. Uh, I still do work uh, on some of the rules aspects at Privateer Press. I'm on the Infernal team there. Uh, I am now, we just recently announced, I'm developing two different card games for the Steamforged Games guys. Wow. Uh, and they both are in the Guild Ball world but they're card games. Uh, one's kind of more along the lines of like a love letter or coup or something uh, like no that. Say no more, say no more. Yeah. Where can I buy it? And, you know uh, I mean? <laughs> hopefully Gen Con. Okay. Hopefully Gen Con. Excellent. Uh, it, it's a bit aggressive in terms of getting it printed by then, so it yeah. might slip, but we'd like it to be out for Gen Con. We cool. think people would really get a kick out of it. Um, so hopefully. Yeah. Uh, and that one's got like some of those bluffing elements and kind of the intrigue behind the league. Uh, where Ooh. you're trying to you're trying to get star players so that your team can can prevail. How relevant is that in this day and age of yeah, the, yeah. the shady dealings yeah. of oh, the league? That's yeah. what it's all about. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and then the other one is Match Day, uh, and that one is more based on like playing guild. It is a a match where you've got cards that represent the players, cards that represent their plays. Uh, and it's very tailored to the different teams' styles, which syncs up nicely with Guild Ball itself. Right, perfect. Uh, so what is it that drew you to Guild Ball? Now, we were talking earlier, and you said sports miniatures games, which is a fun genre to talk about because mm -hmm. it's an interesting genre, kind of started, it got really famous or popular among these circles with Blood Bowl. Right. Uh, and then that was kind of, you know, GW doesn't support that anymore. Fans love it, kept it going. Guild Ball is here. Why is this the game that caught you in that genre? So, there have been a lot of sports miniatures games over time, and I've played a lot of them. And I have a dirty little secret, don't tell anybody that I said this. No one will know, trust okay. us. I hate sports miniatures <laughs> games. I think most of them are terrible. <laughs> but, on good authority, with positive recommendations from people I trust, gamers that I've known for a long time. They're like, yeah. you got to check out Guild Ball. So at War Machine Weekend last year, I gave it a try, and I was hooked immediately. Okay. Uh, Guild Ball's not just a sports miniatures game. It's also a skirmish tactical game. Uh, it's also very much a game of, like, teamwork and strategy. So there's so much more to it than just what some of the other folks have brought to the table. It's also designed very much with modern game development uh, concepts in mind, Very a lot cool. of focus on interactions, on balance, on tournament play. So uh, they've got folks with a lot of strong experience in that regard, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of smart guys at the helm. So I was pretty hooked. I played that Killer. one game and immediately bought one team, played them a little bit, and I was like, I, I need another team. <laughs> need another team. And it's so easy to get, get hooked in. That's so uh, good. Well, that, that's a glowing recommendation. Uh, why don't you show us some of the basic mechanics that we're going to encounter throughout a game of Guild Ball? All right. Well, we'll talk about uh, some of the basics here, but also anyone who wants can go to steamforge.com steamforge steamforge and uh, download the whole rules. Uh, not just a quick start, yeah. not just like a demo version, the full rule book with the stories, with the stats of every single model. See, you, guys are, you guys are on the, the hip end of this thing now. That's what all the cool companies are doing. It's just like, we'll give you the rules because we know you'll play if and you see the rules. The first one's free. Yep. And exactly. not just the rules. They even have a PDFs of little paper dolls you can make. Very cool. So uh, a friend of mine was like, I can play this game totally for free. He made his little paper dolls. He printed out his cards. He played. And I think he has like three teams now. Yeah, exactly. They got him. Yep, sure um, did. So there's movement, I guess. There's damage. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on? What's going on in Guild Ball? So we're playing with uh, three people on a team. A uh, tournament size game is six. Okay. Uh, but it varies. You can play with less. It's uh, still very fun and compelling, even with just a few people. If we look at our cards, you'll see your movement there at the front. It's the first stat there is movement. Okay. If you uh, just do a normal move, it's that first number there. If you do a sprint or a charge, it's the second number. Okay. So you can go farther 
uh, but it has a cost, a cost of one influence, which we'll get to in just a second. For sure. Your attack is your tactical capability. It's your general fighting stat. Okay. Uh, any sort of uh, attack that you make, you'll use that against an opponent, uh, typically in like just beating people up in melee battle. Nice. Uh, and that's how many dice you'll roll. So you'll have quite a few dice uh, for a lot of these guys. Like the guy that I'm looking at right now has attack of five, but it's very simple. Like once you've rolled, you just see how many of them beat their defense. So in my case, against you, two of them beat your defense. And so if we flip the cards over for a second, you'll see a little track along the top there. Yeah. And so that first column, if I had one success, I'd have to choose from that first column. With two successes, I can choose from the first column or the second column. Wow. And you've got various results there. You've got a dodge, which lets you kind of scamper away. You've got raw damage in that one and the two. Uh, and that allows you to really customize each character from like a development standpoint. Each one is very different. Some wow. are better at damaging people. Your team has a lot of guys that are good at kind of dodging away. Uh, and so that... Uh, playbook there on the back, which is tied to attacking with the so tax cool. score, is a very important part of the game. Yeah. We've right. also got kick. Kick is uh, obviously going to be pretty important yeah. for us too. We, we, the first number is how many dice you roll. With a kick, it's just you need a four or better. Okay. So people who roll a lot of dice are almost certainly going to make a success. And we're just kick. trying to pass the ball around, right? Is pass that's the going ball on? around and also shooting on the goal. Right. Excellent. Uh, if people block the goal, they make the shot harder. So there is some of that positional element Excellent. as well. Uh, defense is the number you compare it to when you make those rolls with your, your tactical tac score there. Armor means you actually lose a die from your successes. Oh. So you've got somebody with armor, don't got you? got one and zero and zero. So let's so, assume one there. Yep. So that would mean if I rolled two successes, I'd only actually have one. So That's I have fewer nice. choices. Very nice. Uh, and then the last but most important one is influence. So if you look at all your dudes, you'll see the first number is how much influence they add to the team. So let's go ahead and put out some influence equal to what they bring to the table here. First number only, right? Yep, the first number. Well, look at that, it's handy. I have exactly as many as I need. All right, well, I've got six. You got eight, uh, eight is it? Yeah, yep. eight over eight there. Influence. So you've got a bit more to work with. And the influence points are what let you do cool stuff. Influence is what lets you sprint instead of just walk or jog. Yep. Uh, it's also what allows you to charge, to make attacks, to, uh, to use plays. If you look on the back, we've got some character plays. Like this guy has dirty knives. He can Beautiful. spend an influence to throw a knife at somebody else. Um, so. Is this, a, is this a depleting resource? Do I have eight for the rest of the game and I gotta use them carefully? You have eight per turn. Ooh, wow, so we're gonna be like yep. using these all the time. Yep, this what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna give our influence to our players however we see fit. So Any number. I could do eight to one, zero to the other. The second number. There it is. Is your limit. <laughs> so you've got how much they add to the team and then how much they personally are allowed to use. Beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give just one to my big guy. I'm gonna put a couple over here and three over here. I'm gonna kind of do what you did because I feel like it's gonna be a winning strategy. <laughs> it sounds like a plan. <laughs> uh, you'll also see below the stats, they have uh, abilities. On these cards, we've got a few abilities that some of the people can do. Like my guy here, he subtracts one from their armor. So your guy who's making it harder to oh, damage thanks. him, oh, he doesn't care. <laughs> um, so just various abilities that tell you things that they can do. Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and get into it. Uh, it is alternating activations. Excellent. And one of the last things to talk about is something called momentum. This off-color die, we're gonna track our momentum on our goals and getting momentum will allow you to do cool stuff. Okay, so this is like pumping the crowd up and like starting yeah. to go on a run and these kinds of things. Yep. All right, I'm, I'm hip to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, and partly because I wanna generate some momentum and partly to just kinda get us going here, I'm gonna have Ox uh, 
just move up a bit. He has a move of four. So he's just going to go ahead and take kind of the middle of the middle of the pitch here, and he's going to pass the ball to Boiler. So he's got a kick range of four. You can pre-measure in Guild Ball. Cool. So if Good. you're not sure if something's in, you can always just check it. Uh, and the ball sticks with the character who has okay. it. It's just kind of a token that follows. Solid, around. solid. So I'm going to go ahead and pay. So you're going to pass it backwards. Kick it over to Boiler. There's no front arcs and back arcs. Everything's just all around is, is fine. Excellent. Uh, so he's got a kick score of three. All I need is one or more four plus. All right, good luck. Shouldn't be hard. I have two, you so did that's it. plenty. Passes the ball over to Boiler. He's now got the ball, and now I have a momentum that I can use for shooting on goal. I can use momentum for healing guys who are injured. So very potent resource that you want to kind of generate by doing things like passing, taking down an opponent, things like that. Excellent. So now you'll get to activate any one of your guys. All right, so I'm gonna do, and now I love these demos because a lot of times the first thing that I do is probably the worst move available. But uh, I wanna sprint Siren up okay. the field. Is that is that right. fair? Do you want Siren to attack Ox or just kind of get up the field? I just wanna put her in the way. You know, I put just, her in the way. I played some football before, if you you know if you know what I mean. And uh, you know, if I'm like up around in this area, uh, I could intercept a pass or something. You know, maybe I could right. I could screw you up. So go ahead and spend one to sprint. That's all it takes. All right, and she spent. can now move up to her uh, her second move stat. How about seven inches? What do you think about that? That's that's a bit more than any of mine. Wait, is this good. a is this a trick uh, tape measure? There it goes. <laughs> there it is. All right, seven inches. Let's just do it like this. Whoop. All right. How about thee? And Siren has some things on her card that she might want to do with some of her remaining influence. If you turn to the back, you she got has her, her, her character playbook. play. Target enemy model immediately moves its base move directly toward this model. This character play may only be used once per turn. I can choose anyone within six inches and make that happen. So what if I force your... So you uh, are in range. You could drag Boiler in. Yeah, let's get him in there. All right, so how much does it cost to Costs war? only one. All right, so it only costs one, but that means you only are rolling one die. The cost is becomes kind of like your tack. That's that what makes you're rolling against their defense. So you need a four or better. I can do that. Good, good. That's no problem. I'm good with dice. You got it. Uh. So you drag me in by my base move. In comes Boiler, and you now, conveniently, are in perfect position with your melee range of two inches to actually attack me. So I can move and so then attack. I'm, oh yeah, you can you can sprint that far move by spending and then attack. Wow, okay. So Well yeah, let's do it. Yep, it'll cost you one. Get your dukes up. And go ahead and what is your attack score? It is four. Go ahead and roll the four. And how many of them are a four or better? I believe two of them are. Yep. So go ahead and look at your playbook on the back of the card, and your choices are in column one or column two. So I have a, it looks like a blue dodge of some kind. So now the ones that are colored are momentous plays. So they generate momentum, like passing the ball gave me a momentum. Yeah. If you choose that one, you'll also get a momentum for your team. I feel like that's probably reasonable. And what does the, what does the arrow mean? So that is a dodge. You can move an inch and it ignores parting blows. If I had reach and you wanted to get away, I wouldn't be able to hit you. Excellent. Uh, well, let's let's generate some momentum. Let's just do that, because I feel good. like that's going to be useful later on. So she can then dodge an inch. Want to go any particular direction here? Let's, uh, let's kind of pop off to the side here. Off to the side. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. And All right. go ahead and attack again. I can keep going. You can keep going. You've still got influence. And if you really wanted to, you could use a momentum to gain a bonus die on this, too. I think he's had enough. He's had enough? I'll, All right. I'll save it up. I'll save for later. One. So only one. So not a lot of choices. Let's generate a momentum again. All right. Can we do that? Another dodge off to the side? Yeah. i just kind of trying to taunt you, trying to get in your head. All right. That's, so, that's going to be it. That's, she, she seems kind of uh, have to, have to have done her thing. She's tired, but the crowd loves it. Yeah. You know. I am going to sprint with Boiler and try and shoot a goal. 
Okay. It's probably a terrible idea. No, I that's like what it. I'm gonna do. I like the audacity. I am going to just get on in there. Uh, so I am going to sprint. That'll cost me one. And if you pass through uh, Siren's Rings, yep. I get something. You are going to take a parting blow. All right. A so little. Go ahead and uh, parting eight. blow is plus two dice. From my tack. Yep. So I get six dice. Yep. Well. Well. Looking for fours or better on these. And one, two, three, four. Whoa. How about, <laughs> That's how about a lot. four? That's a lot of choices. <laughs> so let's look at that playbook and see what you've got. I'm oh, a, you've got a tackle. What is a T? Yeah, tackle. A tackle means you steal the ball. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, Siren just stole the ball from Boiler, who's now up the field looking at the goal. Where'd the ball go? Let me tell you, that could not have worked he, out as intended. He's kind of pissed. So he is going to throw a dirty knife. That seems fair. He's going to throw a dirty knife, six inches. He's going to go ahead and throw it at Angel over here. Oh, Angel doesn't she's, deserve she's that. She's looking all innocent. So I'm going to spend my one. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and use my momentum for a second die. I want this to hit. So it gives me two dice now. Trying to hit your defense. And I'm definitely going to I hit. I think you got, got a six. So you get two in your playbook. Uh, so this is a this is a character. Oh, it's play. a character ability. Yeah. So this one says target enemy model suffers one defense, defense, and one damage. So go ahead and mark a damage on Angel. Thank you. And her defense starting here. Is, uh, yep. Yeah, I don't want to go. I don't want to mark the skull first. Yep, it goes backwards up to the skull. One damage. So she's got one damage, and she's also got minus a defense. We'll go ahead and put this Dirty Knives token on her. Rawr. Dirty Thanks Butchers. a lot. Uh, and Boiler's done. You can only do Dirty Knives once a turn. He uh, he had a plan. <laughs> Siren kind of took it away, so he'll be done. And go ahead and choose one of your models now. All right, so I feel like I, Boiler here. he's just an easy target, right? Like, ah, well, what are you going to do to Boiler? <laughs> How he's about, already, wait, uh, actually, gotten... you know what, let's, I, I want to start making some plays. That's what I want to do. So we're going to activate each model once per round, and then we'll refresh. Is and that right? And then we refresh. And when we do, we allocate influence again. And so I can't pass the ball until she activates. Correct. So I'm just kind of trying to take you down a notch right now. Like, I'm just trying to get, get in position. Get position for later, yeah. OK, so let's, I want to activate Angel, and I want to retaliate for that dirty knife. Uh, which means I would like to run up here and maybe take a swipe and also get myself closer to the ball here so I can make some plays later on. So sprinting is uh, one influence. Attacking is one influence. If you combine those two, if you move in a straight line toward your target, for two influence, you can charge. Let's do it. Now, the bonus is that if you charge, you get four extra dice. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I like those numbers. And straight line, right? Yeah, so, and you can go like here-ish, here-ish, like wherever you want. Just get within, uh, that'll work. How about that? Yep. All right, so now we get to make an attack with four extra dice. My yep. attack is four. I'm going to add four to that. So that gives me eight dice total. That seems like plenty. It seems like a good amount of dice. And you're looking for fours. One, Looks like two, four three, of them. Four. Gives you a lot of choices. All right, so I can go deep into four. So, so I have. Let's, for the sake of argument, let's say you rolled five. Yes. Because uh, that lets me explain something I want to explain. Absolutely. <laughs> because I only go to four columns. Right. So if you have choices of five columns when you only have four columns, that means you choose from any of the four columns, then you choose from column one also. Excellent. So on a good charge, depending on what your playbook looks like, uh, playbooks are varying in length. Like you see that there's plenty of room. They could have just one long chain of choices, or they could have uh, as few as like two. Nice, but they could keep recycling. And they keep wrapping. Wow. So it's like, oh, I'm going to pick two damage, and two damage, and two damage, and really beat the crap out of something. Incredible. Somebody. So blue means I get momentum, T is a tackle, and that's yep. only to steal the you ball. You don't need that right now. Uh, what is this little. Uh... So the uh, arrow pointing away is the dodge, which you used earlier. The arrow pointing toward is the push. So you could, uh, that one is push and dodge. So you push me an inch, you dodge an inch, and you get a momentum. But you I might like, want to just deal some damage. I like that too. So why don't we do, since I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to four here, why don't we just do two damage? Okay. 
I want to see how that plays. And then we're saying it wrapped around, so we'll also do one damage. Let's do one more. So boom, boiler takes three damage. Now, if somebody uh, loses all their health, they're gone. They're off the board? Uh, so they are taken out. Okay. Being taken out is one of two ways to score points. If you take someone out, it's two points. If you t uh, score a goal, it's four points. I see. And you're trying to get to 12 okay. to win the game. Excellent. So you might have a team who's really focused on scoring, and usually you try and get three goals and win the game. Excellent. You can have a team that's really focused on takedowns, and they're trying to take out six opposing players to win the game. Yeah. Or... Somewhere Most in the teams, middle. it's in between. Very, uh, very cool. Yeah, you can score a couple of goals, take down a couple opponents, uh, any balance of that that you want. And when a player is taken out, they go to the bench. They're not out of the game. Okay. Uh, if you look, uh, nope, these are demo cards. It's not on there. <laughs> Sorry. But is there in like in general? There's there's what's called a, like an icy sponge marker, and that comes from a, a football term of. Get back out on the field, yeah, lad. Yeah, just sponge yeah. him down. He's yep. fine. It, you'll be fine. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Uh, and that's how much you would be able to come back with. I so see. then you're a little bit vulnerable, but you've got your teammate back. They okay. can do all their stuff. So there's a lot of risk and reward involved in when and how you bring guys back. Beautiful. So can you, real quick, we'll wrap this up with, yep. can you show me a shot on the goal and how that plays out? So let's, yeah, let's rewind and just for a moment, we'll say that Siren didn't. It wasn't just didn't an all-star. get the ball. Yeah. She, was, she was pretty amazing there. <laughs> so uh, shots on goals work a lot like passes. You're gonna use the number of dice that are by your kick score. Okay. Uh, if there is a model in the way, you'll lose dice. Okay. So I would normally have three. Instead, I only have two. And you're looking just for a four. And you just need a four. And that's it's, it. It's There's really a goal. pretty simple. Yep. Beautiful. And what's the what's the second stat on kick? There's like a four uh, and a the, six. The number me? of inches. Okay. So the first one is how many dice you roll. The second one Excellent. is how many inches away the target can be. Whether Very it's the goal, cool. whether it's someone you're passing to. And so you want to kind of build up that momentum and then go, oh, and I I used the momentum earlier, but you need momentum to shoot on goal. You can't just go charging and charging. Right, in. right, right. You've got to build up that team momentum, get the crowd riled up, and then go for the goal. So it costs one momentum to shoot a goal, and yep. then I might like and spend another one to put more dice into it to really make it count. Yep. Very cool, DC. Well, hey, this has been an overview of Guild Ball, guys. It is one of the coolest things. <laughs> I mean, you know, you see these kinds of games, and I've never really understood truly how they work. And you see it, and you see how it plays out, and you start to think, I'm gonna be balancing the ball mechanic, trying right. to get it in, plus health and attacks, plus influence management, plus momentum management, plus I get to move around and look at great models. That's a pretty sweet package. Very diverse play styles for the teams. We've got a very scoring-oriented team here and a very damage-oriented team. Yep. Uh, one of the other teams I play is the Brewers. They're real tanky. Yeah. Like just brawler guys who want to get out there and it can take a lot of punishment. You've got manipulative teams like the Morticians, tricky with all of their grave magic and such. Wow. So, so cool. a lot of different possibilities, a lot that you can do with the game. And I'm looking forward to seeing the new team coming out later this month, the Hunters Guild. Ooh. Brand new. Wow. So, there's a lot on the horizon. I hope you guys are excited about well, it, too. Well, DC, thank you so much for the demo. Thank you, guys. And thank you guys so much for watching this. This is Guild Ball. And of course, look out also for DC's upcoming games uh, in the Guild Ball universe that are going to be here later this year and beyond. So thank you guys so much for watching. we got more from Adepticon 2016, so keep it locked.